Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. MLB The Show with a good one coming at you. It's the Cincinnati Reds and the Arizona Diamondbacks. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. Just about ready to roll. And today on the hill, Gerald Hayden. Chris, you don't have to dig too deep into the numbers to see how good he's been. Oh, he's been nearly untouchable. Kind of a silent assassin out there. Just goes to work and guys look up. It's deep into the ball game and they haven't been able to scratch anything off of this guy. So look for him to do the same thing today. Maybe go the distance. Maybe hand it over to the bullpen at the end and try to get that W. T.J. Friedel stands in now and watches strike one. The 0-1. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. Got it! Really had to move for that grab. One away. Down the number two hitter. Noel B. Martin. In the air to left center. Guriel trying to get there. Two down. Batting third. The right Here's Juan Soto. One. All around, Soto. I think if you asked anyone in this organization, who's the best hitter in the lineup, they would say him. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Hayden, just 19 years old. And he was a sixth round draft pick in 2023. The pitch. And hey. strike two. No ball, two strikes. Two out spaces empty. Just missed. Well, he's not afraid to fall into a two-strike count. Knows the strike zone very well, so much so that I think umpires will look at him and determine. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And it's a three-up, three-down inning. Nobody left for Cincinnati, and now Arizona gets its first opportunity in a scoreless ball game. Back after this on the show. So up next, that Gerald Hayden. The designated hitter. Gerald Hayden. Line to left. Fraley snags it on the run. Back here at Chase Field, second inning, set to go. And ready to hit now for Cincinnati, Will Benson. And the pitch. That one finds the zone, and that is strike one. And the pitch. That one the other way, and foul ball. Got some cut action to it. Velocity pretty good on that slider. So far, moving the ball around nicely. And a pitch. Foul ball still 0-2. Right-hander kicks, deals. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0 and 2. Kicks and deals, and that just misses. It's a good take.
kicks and fires. Pumping serious gas at 102 on that one. But that kind of velocity and elevated fastball, even if it's still in the strike zone, can be tough for hitters to get on top of. And the batter will be the shortstop, Ellie De La Cruz, with just one hit in nine at bats so far in this series. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. You can feel the extra attention on Ellie anytime he comes to the plate. This guy's a player that keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what he's going to do next. He can hit for power, steals bases, he can throw the ball 100 miles per hour across the infield. He's electric. And yeah, that's outside. One and one. Second inning here, no score. Good zip on that fastball at the bottom of the zone. If he's there all day, it's going to be a tough one for the hitters. One down, base is empty. Fouls it off, still one and two. And the right-hander deals. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two out. Off to a strong that start, Singy, as he's That's punched out three good. of the first five yeah. he's faced. Well, he's, he's definitely playing. minimizing contact. He can get the swing and miss when he needs it, but he'll also keep the defense fresh behind him, allowing some balls in play as well. Now at the plate, Matt McClain. Right through there for a strike. Two outs. Foul ball. Sitting of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Reds go down quietly. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back here in the desert, here's the left fielder, Jake Fraley. The left fielder, Jake Fraley. He back to work. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. And a swing to miss. Righty to the plate. Close one doesn't get the call, and the count is one and two. Well, clearly not too happy with the call there. Thought he caught the top of the zone, and you could pretty much read his lips saying, that's not up. Wind in the pitch. Lifted in the air out to left. Guriel has it sized up. And there's one down. Batting it. The first base is number 33. And now Christian Encarnacion Strand. I'm liking what I've seen from him at the dish lately. Working on a five-game hitting streak. That one finds the zone, and it's 0-1. If I'm at the dish right now, I am aggressive over the heart of the plate. This guy's been filling up the strike zone, so you know you're going to get a good pitch to hit. And as nasty as his stuff is, you might as well take all three swings.
One out, base is empty. Foul ball, it stays nothing in two. And there's a ball. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Stays alive. Hey, get your pitch. Stay hot up there. One down, base is empty. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And he'll be beating himself up on the way back to the dugout. He got a pitch to hit and just that's couldn't get to it. I think that slider really caught way more of the plate than it was supposed to. Next for Cincinnati, Tyler Stevenson. Fly ball down the line. Trammell grabs it on the run. Home half of the third coming up. No score. New inning getting started. In now for the Reds, T.J. Friedel. T.J. Friedel in his fourth year, 29 years old, and he's usually in left field, but today he's patrolling center. Right through there for a strike. Well, typically left fielders have the least amount of range in the outfield, so for him to take the responsibility in center field in this one, he's going to really need his corner teammates to help him out in the gaps. That one a little bit high. Now one and two. the third baseman fly to left his first time well be Martin foul ball there the Reds yet to pick up a hit here up strikeout number seven just absolutely rolling on the mound he's now looking very it. much on his game in the early parts of this one boog fully on the attack with these hitters that's seven strikeouts already so he's got a good pace going no doubt soto batting for the second time and that's strike one and now the one Swings through that. He finds himself in a oh, tough situation early. Just going to try to simplify it. Take a knock the other way if you can. The pitch. 
And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Reds down in order. And we're still knotted at zero. Now batting the designated hitter, Gerald Hayden. That one misses. Oh. One and oh. Swung on, belted. Friedel going back. On the warning track, and hauls it in. And we're back. Ready now for the fifth inning. Now it's the Reds' DH, Will Benson. Benson. back to work fought off foul well these Reds they're not going to be happy with the at-bats they've been having so far we're in the back half of the game and they're still searching for a base runner he's been great out there on the mound no doubt but it's also been a disappointing performance at the plate to this point And here it comes. Ball one there. And as we get deeper, it's not going to get any easier. These at-bats are going to feel more and more desperate with every out the rest of the way. Here's a one-two. Fights it off, you'll see another. even up in the air right field in position and there's one away maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it now that and ready to hit now for Cincinnati Ellie, Ellie De, La Cruz. De La Cruz he was a strikeout victim his first time the Reds signed Ellie in 2018, but it took a few years for him to stand out in their minor league system. In 2021, he went from an unranked prospect to a player on a fast track to the majors. Few scouts out there believe a growth spurt helped change Ellie's entire career. Swing and a miss. No balls, two strikes. You know, the Reds were lucky they even noticed De La Cruz. They sent a scout to the Dominican Republic to watch a different player, but Ellie was playing in the same program. The Reds liked what they saw and offered him a deal the very next day. Oh, there's a three-pitch strikeout. He can do whatever he wants with the baseball right now. Now, Matt McClain. Strike one. Swings through that one for strike two. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. All tied up here in the finale of this four game set. Two, three, go the Reds. And we are still scoreless.
And welcome back to the ballpark. Top of the sixth inning. Now the left fielder, Jake Fraley. The pitch. Off the mark there. And that's ball one. sequence of that at bat and the thing to notice are the pitch locations every single one of them on the edges of the strike zone and as a hitter that can be pretty frustrating because you don't expect the pitcher to be able to make quality pitches one after another like that and so those are tough spots to do damage in a great demonstration of pitch command and it got him a punch out that time and now it's going to be Christian Encarnacion Strand Swings and misses. And it's on two. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Up the middle. Perdomo on the first. And that quickly, two away. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Now the catcher up to hit, Tyler Stevenson. His righty lefty splits there. And a foul ball. And he deals. Hacks it, misses. It's a strikeout. So he's perfect through six. And we still have no score. Up next to the diamond, the dedicated hitter. Lifted in the air, right center field. Should have this one. That is the inning. We go to the top of the seventh. Here's the center fielder, T.J. Friedel. Timing issues can snowball quickly, and that's what we're witnessing here. This lineup's inability to lock on to the pitcher's delivery is causing a few awkward swings. Well, I'm impressed with that challenge pitch right there. Even with this slim lead, this guy's not afraid to go right after these hitters. Next offering is down low. Looking to get the tying run on base. Swing and a miss. And a count. One and two. Man, that's just a nasty splitter. Bottom falls out of it. You don't see a lot of guys throw that these days, but I tell you what, he's got a good one.
Left hand hitter waits. Oh, he doesn't get the call. Two balls, two strikes. That's when you always want as a pitcher. Down at the knees, and it looks to me like he's barking. That's a strike. Doesn't change the call, but sometimes it helps to let that frustration out a little bit. Two, two down. He fouls it off. We'll do it again. Just like that, the perfect game is gone. So the perfect game bid comes to an end, and now we'll see what he's got left in the tank and how they'll play it on the mound moving forward. But Singy, he's been a lot of fun to watch in this one. Yeah, Boog, really impressive from the very beginning. I mean, this guy was in total command the whole time, attacking hitters, and really he's made them look pretty lost up to this point. And that one fouled off. When a guy's throwing a lot of first pitch strikes as a hitter, you got to be ready to hit. Now, that's not going to help you get deep into his pitch count and into the bullpen, but you got to take what he's offering that day. And he takes one right on the black. Oh, a two down. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base paths, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Juan Soto now, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. That's off the mark, and it's one to know. And that clips the inside corner. One ball, one strike. Holding on to a one-run lead here at the top half of inning number seven. At the belt and fires. Got him. And to a lay down. A big performance on the mound. Lots of strikeouts. That was number 14. Yeah, clearly trusting his stuff in this one, Boog. Feeling really good about what he's working with. And that really allows a guy to attack hitters. You know, such an important mindset to have out there on the mound, especially when you're ahead in the count with two strikes. So now here's the DH. Will Benson. And there's a foul ball. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around to score and tie this ball game up. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. The pitcher's done a good job of disrupting the hitter's timing with the mix of pitches and changing speeds. You want to keep that front foot inconsistent for the batter. Their swings are hesitant, and that's exactly what you want on the mound. The pitch keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Two outs. That one just misses. Strikeout. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. So one left for Cincinnati. They trail here, one nothing. Back here at Chase Field, here's the shortstop at the play, Ellie De La Cruz. Seeing you talk about a guy that has all the skills. The range is really good, but the arm just stands out, and he makes all the plays. 
And because of that big power arm, he's able to play a little bit deeper, make throws from the outfield grass all the way across the diamond, and still get a pretty good runner. That's impressive. He was late there, strike oh, one. Deal two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Now one away. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down one. Any leadoff base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. And here is Matt McClain. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. 0 and 1. One down, base is empty. Got him looking, and he didn't like the call. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his third strikeout, and this one looking, obviously, so he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Jake Fraley, the next to hit for the Reds. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. Swing and a miss. Going one. Oh, hey, one seven straight strikes to start the frame. He's got a chance at an immaculate inning. Trying to hold a one-run lead, and we're at the top of the eighth. Oh, and two now as he swings through. It. Oh, All right, there's number eight, one away. Line of the pitch. Good job to fight that one off. The 0 2. Got him swinging. Reds go down quietly, still behind by a count of one to nothing. And now the DH, Gerald Hayden. Lots of pop at the plate. Outfield playing back almost on the warning track. He swings and drives one out to deep left field. Dives, but it falls. And now it looks like extra bases. Around third. He scores, and they lead by four. Everything came together for him. Nice line drive to the pull side, met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Second and third, one gone. Next up for the Diamondbacks, Cattell Marte. Drilled to right, way back there, and that is gone. Cattell Marte leaves the yard. His 150th career homer, and they throw three on the board. It's 7-0. Pitch he wanted to hit, spit on some other pitches in this at bat, was very patient, and it paid off. Back 
here in the desert. All set to start the ninth in this one. And here's the first baseman, Christian Encarnacion Strand. And the right hander back to work. Fastball for a strike. He's been so sharp today, even over 100 pitches thrown. His skipper is leaving him in there to finish the job. And a strike on the outside edge. Well, he's gotten ahead with two pitches down in the zone. He has plenty of options right here. He can go up, he can go away, he can add velocity, he can subtract. Check swing of the 0-2, appeal to first, and he held up. Registers the punch out and hits 101. Frustrating end to the at bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. Stevenson in the box again, takes a strike. Well, no base hits in the series for him so far, and it's clearly been a rough one. You just hope he's not pressing too hard because that just compounds things. It makes the slump even longer. Never seems to help. Never helped me. Base is empty one away. You're at the top of the ninth. And downstairs. Really good slider. He's up there just hoping that it ends up off the plate away. And a ball and two strikes. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Finish him off. Didn't agree with the call at the plate right there. Look in a game like this, that's just too close to take. It's a blowout yeah. game. Guys have been out here for a while. Umpire's saying, hey, let's go. Cut it loose. Swing the bat. So they're down to their final out. Next for Cincinnati, TJ Friedel. There's a strike. Ball one low. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense just sputter, not able to get anything going. Hit to the left side, and this is going to do it. Steps on the bag himself. Ball game. Really incredible performance on the mound. You know he's going to stew a little bit over that one hit that he gave up because when you look at the body of work, so dominant, if he'd have made just one better pitch, perhaps he'd have a no-hitter.